Yes, I am here to have a liquid talk. And what my talk is about is about something I have watched on the news. And I have to really come and have a little talk about it. Serious. You know, sometimes when we see things, we don't ignore them. And when things is going on for a long time, it is going on for a long time. So, let me talk my side or how I see things. I am a Jamaican. A true born Jamaican. Yes, I am living in the UK. But when I watch the news and I see what is taking place, you know, there's something you ignore and there's some things that you have to talk about. But let me tell you something, my viewers. There's something I see on the, the news in St. Thomas, Jamaica. And I am from St. Thomas, Jamaica. And I have to talk about this one. Because my, my mother have died in the Princess Margaret Hospital due into a car accident that I have in Yalas. Now, this accident happened in Yalas. My mother was taken to the Princess Margaret Hospital in an open back pickup truck. It was raining. And she went to the hospital alive and the following day she died. She's a car accident she was in. She take to the hospital in a open back pickup truck and she died the following day. So the accident happened like 3 o'clock in the evening and she died like 2 something the following day in the hospital. To me, that is lack of care. But there was nothing for me to disclose that about. Also, the person who hit me have leave the country the next day and nothing come out of that accident. Because what? The police take the person in after the accident, then release him the same day and the guy leave the country the next day and nothing come out of that accident. To me, that's another negligence. Okay? So, that's gone. That happened way down and it's passed and gone. No, what I am talking about now is what I see in the hospital going on. Me personally, I have a clot, a blood clot in my lungs in the UK. I collapsed and I went to the UK, um, to the hospital and I was cleansed and set free from that. And now I'm hearing that this guy was taken into the hospital with a clot and die. My viewers, let me tell you something. In that same hospital, I have lied down an hospital bed in that same hospital, Princess Margaret Hospital, for 24 hours after appendix bursts inside of me. A appendix burst inside of me. I was in Portland. They rushed me to the hospital. When I get there, they rushed me because I couldn't even give my name. When I get there, that's how serious I was. I couldn't give my name. They rushed me on a ward. They put a tube through my nose, send it down, and them suck some things out of me. They take me upstairs and they put me on a bed on a ward. I was lying on that bed for 24 hours in Princess Margaret Hospital before an operation was take place. Why? Them say I need to pay 800 Jamaican dollar for the operation. 
I never have H O N G Jamaican dollar. This was in the eighties, and I'm I'm just going back now to show you, my viewers, how this thing's been going on in that hospital for a long time. This was in the eighties. Eight hundred Jamaican dollars was the ask for to pay for the operation to take place. I couldn't afford 800 Jamaican dollars at the time to pay for my operation. My parents live all the way in Cedar Valley. Some At those times, we never have mobile phone to make a phone call. Somebody have to drive from Lyson to Cedar Valley to get to my parents to tell them what happened to me in Portland and to let them know that I was in the hospital. When they contact the hospital, they don't know where to put their hands in the 80s to find 800 Jamaican dollars to pay for my operation. I have to lie down on that bed for 24 hours, wait until my parents could afford to find that 800 Jamaican dollars to pay the hospital for them to do the operation on me. Yes, it, the money would come up, it was paid, and 24 hours later, I have that operation. But I am saying, my viewers, it, it is slack. It is slack. It is slack. Because the time when I sit in there waiting for them to operate on me, they could have operated on me and the money pay after. But no, the demands that the money should pay first before the operation takes place. No, my viewers, you want to tell me somebody have an accident on the road and rush into hospital emergency and you're going to say you can't tend to the person because money need to pay for the person treatment. It is slack. It is slack. It is slack. My viewers, my mom died. She in an accident on the road and she had rushed to the hospital. She was in the hospital from, I would say, 4 o'clock the day until 2 o'clock the following day when them unknowns are dead. And nobody knew what she died from, whether she died from the car accident or she died from negligence or whatever she died from. I don't know, let's say she died from a car accident. In Princess Margaret Hospital. So when I see this thing about Russia and I watch it, I have to come and have a talk about it. Because you know something? As I said, I have the same thing. I have a clot on my lungs. I have a clot on my lungs where I have to rush into a hospital. I was treated. Luckily, I'm in the UK. I never have to. I could just call an ambulance and they take me in. And sometimes I'm telling you, it makes me feel like I don't want to leave and go anywhere else to live because, you know, I am not saying I have anything against my country, but it makes me think if I was in my country when that clap bone burst in, into my lungs, I wouldn't be alive today. It's serious. This is something that needs to take serious. The Jamaican government needs to do something about NHS in Jamaica. It is serious. So I'm just highlighting this one as I see it. So for you, my viewers, thank you very much for who I like this one. And this is my part in it. You know, God bless you. You know, God bless you. God bless you. I am out on this one. I'm out. I'm just I'm just letting off my steam as I saw this, you know. Ryan, I am the wife of Rohan Livingston Washi Brian who recently, on April 30th, died here at Princess Morgue, is what they call this hospital, Princess Morgue. The hospital name is Princess Margaret, but because of its reputation for not providing appropriate care and the number of deaths they have at this facility, the community refers to it as Princess Morgue. That, in of itself, is a statement that the Ministry of Health should be looking into to make some change. We are here advocating, demanding change. Mr. Bryan died of a pulmonary embolism. In layman's term, it's a blood clot in the lungs. He was
was sent to Apex in a private vehicle. And I'm not even going to go into the private vehicle aspect of it because that's an option that is available when the hospital does not have an ambulance available for the patient. So the patient takes that risk of going on their own. He went to Apex. He had the lung scan done. He came back. He was back at Princess Margaret Hospital at 4.45 p.m. 1 p.m. I spoke with him at 8, after 8 o'clock, and I said, Washi, what the doctor said the report said? He said, Jazzy, no doctor no look on the report yet, no doctor no see me yet. Again, I spoke with him an hour later, and it was the same response. He had not been seen by a doctor. He had not been seen by a nurse. Nobody provided him with any care after he came back from the hospital. Every medical personnel knows that a pulmonary embolism is a critical situation requiring urgent care. They did not care. They provided him with no care. He died unattended in the hospital. This protest here is to bring change to the community so that no other person goes there and dies without getting the proper, timely medical care that is needed. It is a disgrace. If this hospital cannot provide care, it should be closed. And the system revamped so that patients can get care. This is not acceptable. And this is the beginning of the movement for change. I want the community, the hospital facilities, staff, everybody, because they all agree. Some of them are afraid of losing their jobs. But if you're a healthcare worker and you have taken an oath as a doctor to save lives, you are supposed to be in the business of providing appropriate care. And you shouldn't be worried about your job. You should be a whistleblower. Whistleblower should be protected. Whistleblowers are the people who see things that are wrong and speak up about it. And they should be protected. They shouldn't be penalized. So that is part of the change that we want. Better health care. We want people to be protected when they speak up about injustices and inappropriate care and no care that they see. We want change. It's time for a change. Hi, good morning. My name is Beverly Copeland, and I am the cousin of Rowan Bryan. And I just want to also be out here and lending my voice to this movement to ask for a change. I believe it is important for the powers that be to look into the protocols of the hospital to ensure that they have protocols in place and that protocols are being followed for every patient. To, to ensure that they have standardized protocol, not standardized care, because each individual requires individual care. But it's important that the protocols that are on the book are followed, that those are standardized, so no person get different type of care or treatment based on who they are. But the same protocols are administered to every patient that goes through the hospital. It's unfair for the citizens of St. Thomas to be afraid of going to the one hospital that we have here. They should have some level of confidence. Once they get to the hospital, they should have some level of confidence that they are going to be cared for. And their relatives, their families should not be worried or scared, wondering if they are going to come back out of the hospital. So please, I am asking the health minister, whomever is responsible, for reviewing and looking at the protocols in the hospital and ensuring that those are up to standard and they are followed for every single patient that goes into the hospital. It's also important for them to look into the resources that are provided to the hospital because without proper resources, the nurses and doctors cannot do their work. So how is this hospital supported, right? Who is responsible for funding? How is that done? And who is responsible for oversight, right? It's a medical facility, and every facility, just like every job, every organization, has oversight. So who is responsible for ensuring the oversight of the hospital 
to ensure that the protocols are being followed on a daily basis. My hope is that another patient does not suffer any form of an untimely death because protocols, because lack of care, because lack of resources are whatever we need to ensure that patients, that the citizens of St. Thomas are being cared for. My grandmother was admitted in this hospital for several reasons. One of the main things that I really hurt about is the fact that she got me two medications that was wrongfully given. And if you look at the placard, you can see the name of the medication. I may, may not be able to call the name, but one of them, she is allergic to penicillin, and she was given this one, Zosin, that had been penicillin based. The other one was for, for blood thinner. She did a surgery. She wasn't supposed to get the blood thinner after surgery, and she got it. And that helped cause the death of my grandmother. And when we did the autopsy, it shows that she was overloaded with fluid. When blood rats come up, fluid for kilo could I get two buckets of water. And I'm still grieving. She yeah, she was wrong. And I'm still grieving up until this day. One well, the nail on the end is the less care that they gave to the counselor, Mr. Bryan. So we are out here advocating for change, better health care, especially the nurses. The nurses, they are supposed to start advocating for their patients. And that's the reason why we are here this morning. It's not political, but we need change. We need a better health care. We need CT scans. We need everything that we have to fly God told our own, God told our take one taxi, God told for. We need it here at the Princess Margaret. Hospital, so we can better able to call it what? Change. Right? Change. Not Princess Mar, but Princess Margaret Hospital. Change. Better health care. Better health care. Better health care. Thank you. White House Division, former Mayor Murphy. Um, we are here because we understand that. We only have one hospital in St. Thomas. And regardless of if you are rich or you are poor, sometime in your life, it is a high possibility that you may have to attend this hospital. No, this hospital needs proper funding. This hospital needs so much to make it work for the people of St. Thomas. If this hospital was working the way it should work or we intended to work, my good friend, Councilor Brian, may, just maybe, he will be still alive today. And Councilor Brian is just one person. We want to talk for the wider St. Thomas. The residents of St. Thomas deserve to have a good hospital. And it can't be that we don't have a good lab here. It can't be that we don't have the necessary apparatus to carry out the investigatory work. And yet still, we don't have ambulance. If we don't have these labs and we don't have ambulance to transport these people, then we are operating a morgue, not an hospital. We want a hospital. There are enough morgues in St. Thomas. What we need is an hospital. What we have here is a big clinic. Most of the functions that need to save lives are not here. And we have to get them in place. So I'm calling on the government of the day to take the necessary action so that the people of St. Thomas can have an hospital that they can have hope and confidence in. Thank you.